The Black Shuck, a strange and terrible wonder, wrought very late in the parish church of Bongay, a town of no great distance from the city of Norwich, namely the 4th of August in this year of our Lord 1577. In a great tempest of violent rain, lightning and thunder, the like whereof have been seldom seen, with the appearance of a horribly shaped thing, sensibly perceived of the people then and there assembled, drawn into plain method according to the written copy by Abraham Fleming. Hello and welcome to Scones and Bones. This is our second time recording this episode. Uh, also, we wanted to post this episode uh, in November, but due to some family things unexpectedly happening, we weren't able to record in November. So today I have a nice glass of water. Um, because I drank my coffee earlier, and I'm not going to have another coffee at 6 p.m. Uh, I think Audrey also has water, but has a far yeah. cuter mug. <laughs> Look at this. She's so cute, it's but adorable. it's water because it's bedtime. <laughs> Stay hydrated, friends. Yeah. yeah. This is your daily reminder. Go drink some water. Today's Essential. episode, we are... <laughs> so. Sorry. You're fine. Today's episode doesn't want to be. It's very, very stubborn, no. and it's trying not to exist, but I yeah, don't care. We're going to push through. Today, we are going to be talking about the black dog or the black shuck, which is, for me, kind of somewhat between like a cryptid and a spirit. Um, when I was younger, I kind of always more associated it with being a cryptid. The black dog, if you don't know, is just that, a black dog. It is a spirit or a specter that has kind of been seen for hundreds of years. It's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where it came from. I think most of the records are British, but also you think of like Kerberos from Greek and Roman mythology. I'm not sure what the, I think that's the Latin name. I don't know what the Greek name is. Googles it. <laughs> Hold! <laughs> Guess what? It's both. Okay. A worthy endeavor. <laughs> what I needed to know. So, Cabras, which is, you know, a massive three-headed dog, but I feel like was often described as being black. Kind of like a hellhound. Also, hellhounds are a thing. I don't know where those originate from. Are hellhounds in the Bible? I don't know. Somebody else can so. tell me. I've Googled enough. <laughs> wow, this was even going more off rails. Okay, so, Audrey, when I think of the black dog, I think my first exposure to it was in the movie Willow, as well as the movie um, The Neverending Story. I think probably you get those image, get that. You have those images. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think everyone who was a kid in the 90s or early 2000s can remember the scary black dog coming out of the bushes that's about to attack a Treyu and how like, yeah. Hey, it like talks to him. Was. Yeah, I had to run really out of creepy. a room. I was not yeah. about that. Um, yeah, and and also in Willow, which is probably um, a less known movie and less revered, but it's oh, very yeah. precious to our hearts. <laughs> yeah, I freaked out my friends by uh, showing that to them. One of our first sleepovers, they like bring it up pretty frequently and won't let me live it down. Michaela, so, you're like, ooh, I know a really cool movie, and if you have seen the movie, you'd understand why. <laughs> I thought it was great, you know, the whole I family agree. sat it's down and watched favorite. it multiple times. They, you know, want, they were watching Project Runway and I was like, I've got a movie we could watch! <laughs> so, it's definitely been like this image in a lot of movies that's used to represent mm -hmm. evil and a You mentioned Harry Potter too, which I thought was yeah. interesting. It's an interesting spin because when you're initially introduced to this image of the black dog, it's very scary and you get that immediate reaction of, ooh. Like in the beginning scene where, before Harry even arrives to Hogwarts and he's creeping out from like the bushes of a playground, do you remember that? It's very scary, but in I the end- so. he ends I haven't up... watched it in a long time. So yeah, often very much used in like movies and in, um, I almost said movies and films if you're trying to assess my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but there, it, it is an image that is 
I don't know, kind of ingrained in us. Um, like dogs and humans have lived alongside for a while, but uh, like Audrey mentioned in our previous recording, there is also that fear that humans have always had of like wolves and like That's things, a things great that will point. prey on you. That's a really good point, because I think oftentimes the black dog is more wolf-like. The whole, like, the shaggy texture of their fur, and they're very often with, like, pointed ears, and they're large. That's much more, now that I think of it, closer to the description of a stereotypical wolf, which was, like, Mm -hmm. the primary fear for many people across Europe and the Americas, because they were a huge threat until they were virtually wiped out. But that's a really interesting point. So, I really do associate the black dog with England, um, partially because I, for a while, thought it just came from the the Beast of Dartmoor legend, um, which was also in Sherlock Holmes, I believe. If you look up the Beast of Dart, sorry, I totally interrupted you. <laughs> it wasn't interesting. <laughs> If you look up the Beast of Dartmoor, you will find my ring light in the reflection of my phone. Um, you will find footage of supposed beasts of Dartmoor, and some of them, like this one, that looks like a black dog. More often, they are said to be big wild cats, um, and like actual like pumas or jaguars that okay. um, were like raised illegally and then let go because people can't. Um, raise giant wild cougars in their basements. Oh, the Hounds of Baskersville. Or the Hounds of Baskerville. That's what I'm thinking of. Is that about the Beast of Dartmoor? The legend of fearsome, diabolical hound of supernatural origin. So I think, yeah, I think the, the Hounds of Baskerville is also kind of based on this legend, which is um, where I kind of associated it for a long time. But in like the mid 1500s there's a record of these people praying in this church the church roof collapsing and then out pops a spooky black dog and it left scorch marks on this uh door or so they say i don't really know that they're scorch marks i'll show a picture of the door here i showed it to audrey earlier my cats are chasing each other so if you hear any thumping i'm sorry they're uncontrollable it was like a dark and stormy night and like there was lightning and it was spooky and suddenly the roof fell in and everyone was really scared and there's this dog that like growls at them, doesn't harm them, growls at them in a threatening way and then runs down the aisle, opens the door and leaves these scorch marks on the door, which I think is the earliest written record of a black dog specter sort of thing. I think they think it's like an old Germanic legend, just like we spoke about earlier, like an ancient fear or something that is supposed to symbolize death or be a messenger of death. A hard I don't know. If, I'd say. Haha. <laughs> I don't know if they're real scorch marks. It is neat that there's like an actual place that you could go to associated with this written legend. I. La 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 la. Come from Wikipedia. That was Bob. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen. <laughs> oh, I but the delivery of that really. Thank that you was... so much. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an wow. old old. Oh, look at that. You can see. Does he have a scar? Got... Yeah, I think he does have a horn. And this is like old English because the the S's or F's, you know. Really like speaks where? to my soul. Parish. Like, this is my aesthetic. <laughs> I know. It's, it's it's neat. I think it's an actual um, original document. What do they call that? Primary source? I remember Indeed. going to school. <laughs> it's really neat, I think, that there's something actually recorded and documented preserving this kind of sense of fear that is surrounding the black dog. Um, I think that it, I'm really compelled by your earlier point that it's likely related to a fear of wolves and just, you know, animals in general kind of represent this unpredictable danger that's, that's like always present. And I just thought it was interesting that like, it didn't even attack them. It didn't do anything but growl at them and then walk away. So why were they all like so shook? 
It just like scratched yeah. the door and they were like, the devil is here. <laughs> and is it like, did they actually see a dog? Did they just because a everything dog. was falling around? Did I say it like that? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She be goofing. So what's interesting about this is how long it's prevailed and the fact that we still see like movies and shows and books that are using a black dog for like the villain or just Spooky. to represent evil in general. And yeah. I think people, including perhaps maybe yourself, still kind of have those feelings of, what, what would you say? It's Michaela's story time. Do you want to hear about my story about, I told Audrey this story earlier, about my interaction with maybe a black dog ghost, maybe a regular black dog on the street? Okay, Nick and I in February were going to look at a house. It was the first house we were going to go look at. I can't remember if it was like later in the day or if it was just a really rainy cold day, but it was like dark and spooky and I didn't want to go because I never want to go anywhere. Um, and we were driving on the street that is parallel to the street our apartment at the time was on and as we were driving up this road, we see this spooky black thing. I just heard that swallow so <laughs> loudly. <laughs> It didn't get it was well. like in my ear. <laughs> okay, because I just heard it. I didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um. Um. What the hell was that? I went. Hum. Yo, I took my food okay. here. Oh my god. So, oh my god. Wait after. Oh. oh, go get your food. We were driving up this street, and I see a little black animal. It really wasn't little. It was a medium-sized black dog and it was old, really shaggy, looked very matted. I couldn't see a collar and I couldn't see its face. And it was, we were driving up the road and it was crossing over to our right side. So it was walking, it was kind of walking up at an angle. I was freaked out by it. Um, I couldn't see its face. So as we drove past it, I turned around to try and see its face. Couldn't see it. It was like completely like long black matted fur. It was old, kind of like hobbling around. Very, very spooky. I was creeped out. I said to Nick, Nick, oh my gosh, that's like a black dog spirit. They're a bad omen and an omen of death and all that stuff. And I'm freaked out. And Nick was like, it was just a dog. So I texted Audrey and I was like, Audrey, I saw this thing. I think it was a black dog spirit. It was so spooky. And Audrey was like, it was probably just a dog. Don't look into it that much. So, and then I think I sent you several screenshots about the legend of the black you, dog. Yeah, know? you sent me like articles <laughs> and I was very dismissive because I don't really like subscribe to symbolism. In, yeah. Is it not here, Morgan? Sorry. So I didn't want to go. Um, I saw this thing that creeped me out. As we were driving there, we crossed a um, train track and on that train track walking in front of us was a black cat. Which usually I would just be like, ooh, cute cat. But this time I was like, oh my gosh, another spooky thing. I'm even more spooked. Yeah. And I was like, Nick, we should just turn around. I don't like this. And Nick was like, you know, it's weird, but like, we need to go check up this house. It was the first time we were looking at a house. We were going without a realtor. It was an open house. We get to this house. Nobody's outside. We decide to go in anyways, because we just, we're, we're there. We're doing it. We're doing the house thing. We go in. We're like, hello, and there's no one there. There's just papers laid out on this little uh, table. So we look at the papers, we're wandering around, we're like, hello, is there anyone here? There's no like realtor? Like I thought there was gonna be a realtor to ask questions. So we're walking around, it's like a really small house, walking around all the rooms that are open. And then there's a basement. I'm like, well, I wanna see the basement because they didn't have pictures of the basement on the listing. Nick goes to open the door. The door won't open. It doesn't seem like it's locked, it's just, it won't open. That's weird. So Nick walks to the um, room with the papers and is looking at the papers. Neither of us are walking. And I hear footsteps as though they're going downstairs, going down the basement stairs. And I'm like, holy shit, there's someone there. Were they like holding the door shut? Are they hiding in the basement? We didn't see any cars there. Why is there a person in the basement? There should be someone here doing the realtor thing. So we're like, let's leave. Yeah. Um, we ended up getting a realtor and, you know, didn't buy that house. We got a different house. But our realtor was, like, pretty sure that's illegal. And it's so super creepy. And it was just, like, so many creepy things leading up to that happening. Like, the the black dog thing. Um, the, the black cat, which normally I would 
you know, like I said, think nothing of it. It was really that I was just freaked out because I saw that dog and I couldn't see its face or a collar. It was just so spooky. And then that weird thing. And I'm like, is it someone hiding in the basement? Is it a ghost? Uh, who knows? Either option's bad. That story's really creepy. And it's funny, I had mentioned earlier that like, I was very dismissive when you initially, <coughs> excuse me, um, like was you were like, oh, I saw a black dog. I'm feeling creeped out. And I was like, Really? Like, but I think it's interesting knowing the second half of the story that there was like, like just general anxiety leading up to something that could have been really, really sketchy. Like realistically speaking, mm -hmm. I think that kind of a situation could totally be like some sort of really unsavory trap. You know what I mean? Like people are crazy you know? and you just never know. So I Robbing, think- Robbing, human trafficking, who knows what. Mm -hmm. It, been. It's very scary to think that like you're just in an unfamiliar place and you just don't know what could happen So mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to imagine that you kind of were just getting a sense of the situation through whatever type of Signals you got so I think yeah, my heightened anxiety mm -hmm. was useful this time. <laughs> yeah I, Overall like I don't think like I don't feel fully convinced by the black dog thing in general and I think it's a really interesting like fear but like I just don't know that it scares me as much you know what I mean it was creepy when I saw this dog mm -hmm. I was creeped out but I'm probably already predisposed to being creeped out by a shaggy black dog again like I said not even just because of knowledge of this legend but seeing it as a child through media like we discussed yeah as a bad thing as a scary thing yeah also that was bef before coronavirus mm. so you know <laughs> walking into a stranger's house like they they should have been there someone should have been there yeah it wasn't like they were socially distancing yeah so it's a weird it's a weird and it's definitely a spooky story it's like so creepy but it's i just don't know what's real think. life yeah definitely i'd like to know what people think if it's something people yeah. know because I, I think it was interesting when you asked me like if it was something I had a good sense of there's not like a story mm -hmm. connected to it it's just like a general image I think throughout a lot of different stories so I'd be interested to know if there are more specific legends floating around and if anyone has like knowledge of that you know yeah or if you can think of another um, reference in pop culture and media um, that we didn't discuss that yeah. kind of portrays a spooky black dog as something um, because it does kind of seem like a broad strokes a congruent theme mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know if that really makes sense there but yeah so that is or was supposed to be our November episode <laughs> for Scones and Bones uh, we will see you in a few weeks for our Christmas episode our, our holiday it's going to be most like Christmas themed because we're talking about, uh, well, you'll have to find something, out. Something spooky and Christmassy. I wonder what that could be. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what it could be. My gosh. Get Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can subscribe <laughs> if you want to hear us ramble about more spooky things. Um, and yeah, have a good day. Bye. Watch out for the black dog. Rrr, bark, bark, bark. Bah, 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 bah. You know, I bit my Irish tongue. wolfhounds. <laughs>